Hey guys, so I thought I would do a playing with makeup video. I have some like new to me, recently hauled, like a real hodgepodge of stuff that I wanted to play with personally. So I thought I would just go ahead and turn on the camera, but uh, we're gonna be featuring a couple of things that I got from the new Glossier Play line, and that is the Highlighter Concentrate in Pale Pearl. Maybe the product name is Nightshine. It is a highlighter concentrate and the color is pale pearl. <laughs> anyway, here is the cute little bottle that it comes in. And so we're gonna be playing around with that. And then I also picked up one of their uh, new lippies. It is the vinyl, vinylic lip, vinylic lip. That is a really awkward word, Vine, vinylic. I'm gonna say it's vinylic lip. And I got it in the color Pony and it's like one of those liquid lip products that's gonna come out of this like sponge tip applicator. We'll see what happens. So I just started with these two products from the new Glossier Play line. Um, I figured if I liked these two, then maybe I'll dabble with some of the other things. But if you're unaware, Glossier came out with a brand new line called Play. And to me, this line is definitely much more colorful. Like the name suggests, it's like much more playful. And I feel like they're going after the ColourPop customer. At least that's the sense that I got when I saw the promo pics for the products for the first time. So we're definitely gonna be using those two things. And then I just have some really random stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and start with some primer and foundation. So a couple of weeks ago, maybe, I started playing around with the Sisley Latent Foundation. And this is not a new foundation at all. And I went in store, I, I've been in store actually a couple of times, just kind of trying it out at the counter and I never felt like any of the shades in the foundation were quite right for me. And then finally I decided to just get a big Hawkins sample and like try it on at home. And so a couple weeks ago I used this and I think I tried it on with you guys and this is 1B Ivory. And I thought this was a great color, it looked great. I was all ready to get it and then I put it on, I looked in the mirror this one day and I thought it is so much tanner than my neck. I don't mind a foundation that's a little bit deeper than my neck, but it seemed so much tanner and so much warmer that it was really like the perfect shade for my forehead, which is super dark compared to my neck. And I thought, that's not really what I want either. And so I had second thoughts about this shade, went back to the counter and got a couple samples of the color Zero R Vanilla. And I I can't really figure out their shades, I have to say, because this is 1B, which is I think beige, and then this is Zero R, which I think is red, R for red. There is a Zero B, but it's lighter, and I think it's porcelain. Anyway, that just didn't work at all, and I don't, I don't know, I didn't understand why that would be a B. But anyway, I used this actually in my video yesterday, mini reviews, uh, part two for June 2018, and I really, really liked it. So I thought I would use it again today, since I have another sample, and just really make sure, <laughs> once and for all, that this is the shade that I want, and then I'm gonna go out and get a full bottle of this and do a full day wear test for you guys. But while I was at the counter getting that sample, they also gave me this instant correct color correcting primer in Just Rosy, 01. And she said that this could be good just to kind of even out my forehead because it's so dark if I wanted to go with a lighter foundation. And I also had this on in my video yesterday and I really, really like the way it looked. So I'm basically gonna use the same combo today. Let's start with the primer here. I'm just gonna rip this envelope open. Ooh, this is what the primer looks like. It is a little, it's more peach than it is rosy. And I liked that about this particular primer. I don't really like ones that are too cool toned because then it just kind of makes my skin look a little bit ashy. So I was happy with like the color, the very, very slight color correcting that it did for my skin. It really did like a nice kind of brightening. Um, but let me put some on my forehead, which is where I think you'll see the difference the most. You really don't need a lot of this. Not that it's thick, but a little bit really goes kind of a long way. So a lot of times when I get um, color correcting primers, I just, I don't know, the color never ever seems right. But this one seems to be doing like a really, really good job um, just sort of neutralizing the, the difference in my skin between my forehead and like down by my jawline. And I've never ever used a product that did that. I thought that was really great. My forehead is really warm. My jawline around here is a lot cooler in tone. And this seems to just kind of even it all out, at least in tone. Shade wise, this is still pretty dark as you guys can probably see. 
but I feel like it does just a really nice job kind of dealing with my different undertones. And in terms of a primer, I feel like it just has a really nice texture. It's a little bit closer to like a lotion maybe. And there is minimal tack. It's not like super duper tacky, like a long wearing um, primer. It's, uh, it's really nice. It's really like middle of the road. It's not too much of one thing. So there it is. I hope you guys can see like how it has kind of evened out the tone in my skin. I just think it's super cool, super cool product. So I'll be picking this up too when I go and I get a uh, full bottle of this foundation. So let's go ahead and put on this foundation. Now I am being a good girl and washing all my brushes. So I'm gonna use a sponge actually to apply this foundation. And I thought that this would be a good test um, also uh, because I've basically been using a brush to apply this foundation. Again, this is Zero R Vanilla, I think is the name. Yeah, Zero R Vanilla. And I'm using my Sonia Kashuk sponge to blend that all in. And for anyone out there who is curious, I just did that clay de Poe like full face and I used the Radiant Finish Foundation. And I like that foundation, but I think I like this one more. I feel like this one looks a little bit more healthy on my skin. It looks a little bit more radiant and dewy and I like that. Even though that one is supposed to be a radiant finish foundation, it doesn't stay that radiant on my skin. I felt like by the end of the day, it didn't have any dewiness at all. Although I have to say, I have not tried that foundation without that primer, that Correcting Cream Veil primer. So I do want to try it maybe with a different primer or with no primer at all um, and let you guys know. But if at this moment you were to ask me which one I would choose, it would be this foundation, this Sicily Latent foundation. So I don't have any new concealer to try. I was playing around with uh, one of the Sicily concealers in yesterday's video when I was also testing the primer and the foundation, but I only had one sample pack of that. So I don't have that anymore, at least not for today. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use the YSL Touche Clot, the high cover radiant concealer. And I know I've talked about this uh, in my favorites because I really do enjoy this. And I had flash like footage of me using this, but I figured it would be nice to actually show you guys me using it. I have to use quite a bit more product than I am used to. Um, usually I'm okay. Like usually this is a lot of concealer for me. I find this to be plenty, but for this particular, particular formula, I find I have to use quite a bit to get a decent amount of coverage. All right, I'm gonna use my uh, Sigma P82 brush. This is uh, my favorite Sigma brush to blend in my concealer. All right, there is the Touche Clot High Cover Radiant Concealer on. I really do like this concealer. I do find it pretty comparable to the Armani uh, Stretchable Power Concealer, which I've been loving. Um, but this one, it just takes a little bit more product to actually get the same amount of coverage. Okay, powder. So I don't have any new powders, but I thought I would take the opportunity to use something in my collection that I've never used. So this is the Bobbi Brown Nude Finish Illuminating Powder. I don't generally like illuminating powders for setting powder, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna give it a shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my brand new Beautylish and Chikahoto uh, collab brush that they created for Lunar New Year. And here are the little piggies on the handle. I'm definitely spying some micro glitters in here, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but we'll just go on. The rest of my skin, I feel like looks pretty nice actually. All right, that is the Bobbi Brown Nude Finish Illuminating Powder in Nude. And I actually don't mind it as much as I usually mind, like a glowy setting powder. I think this actually looks okay, aside from the little micro glitters. And I think that's just from this one little block right here. This one has some pretty pronounced micro glitters. But... Oh shoot, I am such an idiot. I powdered before I went in with the liquid highlighter. Well, this will be a good test to see if this works over powder. So let's go ahead and play with this Glossier Play uh, Night Shine. And I really like this packaging. This is a glass bottle and this is a little doe foot. When I first saw this, for some reason, I thought it was gonna be a highlighter that I had to like pour out. And I thought, mm, that's gonna be really messy. I don't know why they did that, but this is so much smarter. So this is, let me just swatch this for you. 
this is what that looks like by itself. Wow, that's really, really pretty. So I think what I'm gonna do is put some more on the back of my hand and then I'm gonna use my finger to apply it. I'm just gonna grab some and then just tap it on. Ooh, wow, that, <laughs> that's really, really shiny. Tap that on and blend it in. So this highlighter, I think as long as I tap it seems fine. I don't feel like I'm affecting anything underneath. So when I first touched this Glossier um, liquid highlighter, it felt a little bit oily, so I didn't know if it was gonna be one that like stayed tacky, but it seems to be drying down. Um, it does not seem to be tacky at all. It seems like, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say it's like a powder finish now, but it doesn't feel uh, sticky at all. What a pretty highlight. And I'm just kind of playing around with like what's left over on my skin. I feel like sometimes, I don't know, this is just a good test. Just kind of rubbing it back and forth. Does it eventually kind of ball up? Does it eventually, um, I don't know, start to act weird like the more you kind of rub it? But this actually, I don't know, feels really nice. It actually feels very kind of moisturizing on the skin. It really feels really, really nice, and I really like the glow that I'm getting. All right, so next, I don't have a new bronzer, but I figured I would pull out a Forgotten Love, and this is the Anastasia Powder Bronzer in Rosewood. I have not used this in a long time. So I'm just going to apply some of this very lightly. These bronzers are very pigmented. They're also matte, and when bronzers are matte, I feel like they they just look darker on the skin, probably because they're not reflecting any light, but I feel like they are just more impactful when you put them on. I really like the tone of this one. It's very natural. It's more of like a sun burnt look versus like just kind of looking bronzy or orangey. All right, so there is the ABH bronzer on. Really, really enjoy it. And I do have a new blush. So Natalie from Flower Bomb 31, she was actually here in Vegas this past week and we met up. We decided to do a little shopping as beauty YouTubers do. And so we went to the Chanel boutique um, at Caesars Palace. And so they had this one random blush out um, on this little shelf that they have right at the front of the store, which is usually where they put like limited edition or uh, like special edition products. And so I kind of, you know, shimmied over there and it looked like the Reflex blush. And I said, what blush is this? And she said, oh, it's the Fleur de Lotus. She said it's an older blush, but it is limited edition. And she's like, if there's any kind of extra stock, we'll get a couple of them. And they only had two of them. So I grabbed one and it's it's just, it's really pretty. Let me just show it to you. It just seemed like the perfect like springtime blush. It's this really pretty, pretty um, peach with like a hint of a pink, like baby pink tinge in there. And so I just, Wanted to give it a shot. So I'm just gonna go with my Chikahoto cheek brush here. I went a little high with the blush application and now I think it's kind of sticking to this liquid highlighter. So it's making it really kind of bright. And then like, I don't know, it's like forcing me to, <laughs> to blend it up even further. Whoopsie. Wow, that is a very bright blush, but it's a really pretty color. I really do like that for spring. Let me use my powder brush here and see if I can just kind of dampen it a little bit. All right, so that is the Fleur de Lotus Chanel blush, which I'm not sure is still available anywhere. If it is, I'll link it down below. But let's move on to powder highlighters. So we have the Glossier Playdown, but I've been wanting to try, because I just haven't gotten a chance, uh, I've been wanting to try the new uh, RMS uh, luminizing powders. And I got two shades. I got Madeira Bronzer, which is this one. It's a luminizing powder, so it's very, very uh, sheeny, but it is so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Oh, that's over the liquid highlighter, but it's so beautiful. You get a sense of how beautiful the sheen is. And so I thought maybe it would make like a nice bronzer topper. I'm not, I'm not really sure. My bronzer does not look very well blended right there. Sorry. So I thought I would try this as a bronzer topper. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna go in with the same brush that I used with the bronzer. This is the Shatakai uh, face brush. And I believe this was like a travel version because the handle is actually pretty short. All right, so I'm just gonna go in with, ooh, that's deep. <laughs> that's deep. Oh, it's so glowy. Ooh, I kind of like that. 
Do you see that glow? Ooh, that's pretty. And I didn't even use that much of this. Ooh, I like that. I feel like I'm adding dimension to the bronzer area, which is already adding dimension. It's very exciting. So I also got uh, the Grand Dame uh, Luminizing Powder from RMS Beauty. And this one is a little bit more of a traditional highlight shade, if I can get it open, here we go. So that's what this one looks like. And I hauled these in my last haul video, but this powder, I remember thinking it was like uh, pretty subtle, which you can see right there. So um, I think that'll actually look nice over this liquid highlight. Maybe it'll be a little bit too much, but I thought we would give it a shot since we're just kind of playing around with makeup. The formula of these RMS Beauty powders, they're just, um, they're, they seem to me like regular kind of pressed powders. They don't seem like they're a baked gelée or they're like a baked formula or anything that's really difficult to pick up. So I'm just gonna use my Sonia G fan brush. I also kind of want a light application since we already have that um, Glossier Play liquid highlighter down, but I just have a little bit right here. Oh yeah really kind of amplifies any liquid highlight you have underneath, no surprise there. That is a really pretty tone. There isn't a lot of warmth in there. There's just a little bit of yellow, but there's no peach. There's no kind of pink to it. It's just a little bit of like a yellow kind of icy gold. Well, now my highlight is like really exciting. It's really beaming. <laughs> I do not have anything new or exciting to share with you in terms of eyebrows, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel in Espresso. I'll do that off camera and I'll be right back. I got a little cavalier with the Fiber Brow Gel. So another thing I picked up at the Chanel Boutique is another Ombre Premiere, and this is the one that was just released with their Pierre et Lumiere collection. I think that's what's called. I have the worst memory ever. Anyway, that was the collab that I did with Jill Christ, and she actually hauled this ombre premiere, which is in the color Pierre de Rose. And I kind of fell in love with it. On the website, I thought, oh, it's just a pink cream shadow, but it's actually really, really interesting. It has like a lilac, I don't want to say shift, because it's, I don't know, it's not really a duochrome. It just kind of has like a lilac undertone, I guess. There, oh, why am I swatching it over the highlighter? Sorry, let me swatch over here. Here is the Ombre Premiere. I just thought it was so pretty. I don't know if this will go with like my cheek look, but I, maybe it is like a little bit of a duochrome. It's, it's just, it's really pretty. Let me just shut up and put it on for you. This is the Sigma P86 brush. This is the Precision Tapered Brush. It's kind of big, but it's just, it's just really nice if you wanna put a shadow all over the lid. So I'm gonna try it with this one. It's such a pretty pink. It's such a cool looking pink color and cool in both senses, literal and figurative. But, but it has like pink micro glitters in there. There's like gold ones. And then the undertone kind of shifts between like a cool and a warm. This is just such an interesting shade. There's a lot more to this than it just being like a light pink um, cream shadow. So we just turned the clocks uh, forward uh, last night or early this morning. And what an awful ritual we've created for ourselves. I mean, it just doesn't make sense anymore and I don't understand why we do it and it sucks. And every year everyone like loses their mind for like a couple of days. Like tomorrow, everyone's gonna be exhausted when they go to work. There's gonna be car accidents. It's just a terrible idea. I wish we did not do this. All right, there is the pink eyeshadow on. Again, I don't think that's the best look with this blush. This is very warm. This is very cool and icy, but I just had to show you guys this ombre premiere. It is so pretty. So, so pretty. I am gonna try and warm up this eye look by using the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. So this quad is an interesting one. I think it looks very, very pink in the pan, but when I put it on my lids, it's actually much peachier or my skin kind of warms it up a lot. So I'm hoping it'll kind of warm up this look, but not too much where it just kind of looks crazy. Let me try, actually. I'm gonna try my Charlotte Tilbury uh, Eye Blender brush. And I'm gonna go into this shade right here. I think it did exactly what I wanted it to do, but I'm still not sure if it looks okay with my cheeks. A little bit better, maybe. I'm just gonna add this darker color to the outer corners. Well, 
This is definitely not uh, an eyeshadow look that I would have planned. You guys let me know what you think. It's hard, I think, mixing cool and worn tones together, but sometimes they work. Um, and I think maybe this kind of works. I don't know, you guys let me know. Let me know how it looks. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just add a little bit of eyeliner and mascara and I'll be right back. So I just curled my eyelashes and I thought I would come back on to show you the mascara I'm using because I've only used this I think once, maybe twice on camera. And then I talked about this during my declutter, but this is the Kogan Do mascara that is actually a tubing mascara. And I kind of forgot about it until I did a declutter and pulled it out. And I was like, oh my gosh, this mascara is awesome. So I thought I would use it with you guys. I'm gonna take my refer pencil brush and go into this dark color and just uh, brush that on my lower lash line just to kind of finish the look a little. It looks a little undone. All right, and last but not least, we've got lip stuff. So we're gonna play with this Glossier Play Vinylic Lip in Pony. That is a difficult name. So again, it's one of those sponge tip applicator ones. So I'm just gonna click the bottom here. Hopefully it's not one of those products where it takes 5,238 clicks. All right, I'm so curious to see like how pigmented these are. Oh, okay. The texture of these is definitely more like a, like a liquefied lipstick versus a gloss. Not a liquid lipstick, but like a lipstick that's been melted down. Oh, but it feels nice. I don't know what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a little bit goopier, a little bit uh, stickier. I thought it was gonna be like a really thick kind of lip gloss, but it's not. It really feels like a liquefied lipstick. And I like this whole like vinyl finish that a lot of brands are coming out with, like Charlotte Tilbury's Latex Love, the Lip Lacquer Lux from Tom Ford. These, they all have like a subtle shine to them, not a high gloss shine, but just something that's like, like a shine that's been blotted down. I really like that. All right, I think I'll probably be getting more of these. This is a really nice formula. All right, so that is it for this playing with makeup. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit all over the place between things that I have forgotten in my collection, new to me things, and things that are actually brand new to the world. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I always have a lot of fun doing these playing with makeup videos. I always have these, you know, daydreams of being able to like sit down with all of my girlfriends and we just kind of play with makeup. But the reality is no one really has time to do that. We're all a little bit too busy these days, but I love this idea of just sitting down with my girlfriends and playing with some makeup. So let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.